right, and we are back. All 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 right, and we are back. Right, and we are back, and today we're back with more religious content, guys. Yay! Yay! Praise above, uh, because I am back with more religious content, guys. I know you've been waiting for it. You, 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 all of you guys, all around the world. How you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the religious content, guys. Uh, and I'm back with a friend of the channel. You guys all know him. You love him. I'm back with useful charts. And today we're gonna to be watching a video, The Histo Map of Religion by John B. Sparks. So this is gonna be an interesting video. I don't know what religion they're gonna be covering. Uh, maybe it's all religions, maybe it's Christianity, maybe it's Judaism, maybe it's Islam, maybe it's our good old friend Hinduism. Yay, I don't know. Don't, don't ask me, I don't know. We're gonna be watching it together though, guys. Uh, and if you haven't already, Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to this channel here. Uh, there are consequences if you don't, but those consequences are mostly for me. Unfortunately, uh, you guys didn't sign anything, so you know, no, nothing for you. Uh, but guys, uh, make sure if you haven't already, make sure you guys go to the Useful Charts channel, like, comment, subscribe, tell them that I sent you. Be like, hey, I saw this really great YouTuber. He does reactions to your channel. I, honestly, he does the best I've ever seen. Like, it, they're so incredible. I'm like mind blown every time I'm at the end. But he told me to come to you, and now I'm here. Thank you, thank him, and that's that. that that's what you do. So go go ahead and do that, guys. Go go do that. Uh, so yeah, guys, make sure you go to the channel. His link will be in the description. Uh, with that being said, you know, let's go into the video. I do have one important thing to say though. Uh, that is that if you guys don't like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, subscribe. Subscribe is the most important part. YouTube will come through that door, and they will. Useful Charts, Histo Map of Religion by John B. Sparks. Hi, this is Matt Baker. Today, we're going to look at a chart called the Histo Map of Religion, which was created back in 1943 by a man named John B. Sparks, All who right. was a chemical engineer who made charts as a hobby. This one was actually part of a series of three charts that he made, all of which were called histomaps. Oh, wow. Guys, I know I have no information on these maps outside of what the names of the Mar, the histomap, histomap of religion, histomap of evolution, but guys, I am going to say that I, for some reason, the color scheme of this histo map of evolution is, I'm, I'm liking it, guys. Which one is your favorite? Comment below. Comment which one is your favorite, guys. And all of which were published by Rand McNally. From a design point of view, I think they're pretty great because of yeah. how the changing column widths give the viewer a sense of how things change over time. Now, if you're familiar with any of these charts, it's probably this one which was simply called The Histomap and was subtitled 4,000 Years of World History, Relative Power of Contemporary States, Nations, and Empires. Wow. This was the first. What was going on at the beginning, guys, with Egypt? Let's see. Egyptians have by this time developed agriculture, shipbuilding, government, uh, commerce, art, law, writing, and mathematics. That's pretty dope. And that was all by 2000 BC. What was everybody else doing? Uh, Mediterranean Aegean? Ad 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 I don't know. You guys, you guys know how to say that. I, uh, you know, I know how to say it, but I'm letting you. I'm getting it wrong on purpose so you guys can say it. Uh, for let's see, they were going, you know, going to see uh, first, middle, more, you know. Okay, okay. They're not really doing too much. They're not really doing too much. Okay, these guys, uh, six king of dynasty. Whoa. Already has six kings already. Dang, bro, calm down. Save some kings for the rest of us. Early Iranians. Uh, let's see. It doesn't really speak of what you guys. 
probably the same as Arians. Okay, I don't know if that's 100% true. You said probably. Uh, the oldest historical records of the Mongolian people. Oh, wow. Shout outs to them. Earliest records. That's what's up. Uh, China, a small empire divided into nine provinces under the autocratic rule of one emperor. A already getting autocratic rule in the year 2000 BC. Shout out to China, man. First one that Sparks created and was the one that sold the best originally for just one dollar. But he hey, also later designed two price. lesser known histomaps, the histomap of evolution and the histomap of religion. I'm going to focus on the religion one since, as I mentioned last time, I'm hoping to publish my own chart of world religions sometime this year. But for hey, I got a chart of his uh, freaking his, the Christianity. And you know what, guys? I'm thinking of investing into a chart of his other things as well. So comment down below which is a chart that you guys would like to see in the background of the beginning of the videos and everything as you normally do. So let me know. Let me know. Comment below. First, I want to show you how you can chart out your own history. Thanks to today's sponsor, my heritage. Whoa, I've talked guys, about my have do you do you guys have heritage? Did you know that we all have a heritage, and you can find out your heritage on my heritage, not my specific heritage, but your heritage on the site that's named my heritage. My in this case is you. So all you got to do is go to creating a this website tree. and just how you're gonna create a family tree, guys, a family tree. That's a tree full of people in your family. All you got to do, first, you're, you're going to type in your name. Now, your name is probably not Matt Baker. Unless, Matt Baker, you're watching this video, then your name is Matt Baker. So you're going to put in your information. Where you'll be at. Your, your dad's name, your mom's name, the email addresses, all the information you can find, your birthplace. And then, you know what? And your mother's father. They're and gonna, then, then your you're going to put in your grandparents' mother. name. And then they're going to look for that stuff. You know in what? Just They're a gonna few research. seconds. It Look at this. Look, a few seconds. Found a match between. My Bam! They found the match already. He didn't. That was only a few seconds, guys. My grandmother and a record that looks to be the same person. Yes. The name, birth year, death year, and husband are all the same. So yes. Exactly. Come oh, on. All I have to do is click yes. The match yes. is then confirmed. And then they match, and then they confirm all the other people in that family. And then this is how you're building your family tree, guys. Ignore the, you know, graves and everything. Uh, there's going to be alive people, too, sometimes. All probably. I have to find my way to. And then look at this chart you guys get. Look at this family tree. Look how cool it is. Look, there's Matt Baker. There's his parents. There's his grandparents, great grandparents, so on and so forth, guys. You're going to know everything about yourselves. Building my tree. As time goes on, my heritage will continue to give me more and more matches. They're going to give you more matches as time goes on. That means they're going to be like, yo, did you know you related to this guy? Uh, and then when that person commits a crime and you already signed up for this, they're going to use your DNA to get that person locked up. And crazy, guys. Build Two your billion own records. Tree. You're gonna get. You're gonna have people who are cousins, distant cousins of yours, from three states away, committing a crime, and their fingerprints are gonna be left there. And then they're gonna look at your records and be like, "Oh wow, that DNA matches a bunch of people who were signed up to my heritage." And then they're gonna be able to track that person down and get that person locked up because they committed a crime and you just helped solve that crime, but you did not get any recognition. But you did do a good thing and you now know who you're related to. This is crazy, you guys. Can sign up for a 14 day free trial. 14 days for free. You get 14 days of free knowing who your family is. And then after that, it's 50% off. You can't afford not to do this. Also, the family cannot afford to commit crimes anymore, guys. Win-win. Of my heritage, will charge the viewer, you will also have a map of religion. Let's go. Unlike the original histomap, this one starts at 180,000 years ago. And thus, hmm. a good portion of the chart, I'd say about one-third, is focused on prehistory, which is everything that happened before written records. Okay. For most of the prehistory section, there are six columns, each representing a type of early religion. 
But it's important to note that these types do not correspond to specific regions of the world. In most cases, each type developed in more than one place. And mm. in each place, more than one type developed. Gotcha. So guys, this isn't going to be going specifically over any specific religion. This is more like the concept of religions and how there are different types of religious concepts when you start off with. They're just saying like, here are the initial six and then we're going to go from there. Like, you know, the, this, okay, I kind of mess with this. I, I kind of like this so far. Let's, let's see what he's got to say, guys. Now, while this chart is 80 years old and based on theories about the origins of religion, which have yeah. now been either rejected or at least seriously oh. revised, the general ideas. Guys, let's not listen to the radical theories. There will be radical theories. Warning, warning. This is the radical theory warning. There may be radical theories that are outdated on this chart. Expressed by these six types are still somewhat valid. So let's take a look at them one by one. The first column is magic and fetishism. You've probably heard the word fetish before, but in a very different context. Yeah. Here, it simply means an object that has special powers. Mm. So the idea is that early humans started to use objects to perform magic to ward off evil or to put curses on their enemies. Now, I'm pretty sure that Sparks would have been familiar with this set of books called The Golden Bow, which were very popular in the early 20th century and still remain influential today. In them, the author, Sir James George Fraser, argues that all religions started with magic, but then evolved to other forms, which were more advanced. Mm. This is why later in this section, Sparks writes, Primitive peoples in Africa, Australia, India, etc., lacking necessity or incentive for further cultural evolution, carry on this animistic fetishism. In yeah, guys, this is one of those outdated radical theories that he's saying right now. This is to, to like pinpoint like primitive peoples. And notice, sorry guys, if you notice all the primitive people he mentioned just so happen to be people of color. Yes, the native Australians, the people of India, the people of Africa, etc. Apparently no religions within the, you know, the country like european planes ever started off with you know uh magic or something even though we know that's not true shout out to the celtics in their tribal also i don't know if they started off with magic i just said shout out to the celtics so shout outs to the celtics rituals to this day so this is not something that current scholars of religion would ever say no it's representative of the very eurocentric holier than thou attitude that was still common at the time whoa what does that say negroid men probably still dominate in europe and africa but in conflict with mediterranean or caucasian brown race what does that even mean like in this year there's oh my gosh this is primitive time. nowadays man, proto australoids probably driven out of Europe and Northern and Central Asia into Africa, Southern Asia and Australia by the Negroids. What the hell? What is this chart, guys? Scholars still see differences between the types of religious practices out there, but they no longer put them on a continuum from primitive to advanced. Oh my God, this whole left, guys, this whole left side of the chart is absolutely insane. Oh my gosh. Uh. Which makes sense because magic and fetishism can still be found in just about every culture. For example, Jews and Muslims often still hang a hamsa or wear an eye bead for protection. And many Christians still have a lucky piece of clothing that they wear, say, when playing sports. Okay, the next column is taboo and totemism a pairing that is probably based on this book by Sigmund Freud. You've likely heard of totem poles. Yeah. Well, a totem is simply an emblem, often an animal, that is used to represent a certain family or clan. A taboo is something that is forbidden, or at least severely frowned upon, within a human culture. One okay. of the taboos that virtually all human societies have, for very good reason, is a taboo against incest. 
Yeah. So the idea is that that's a good taboo. I think we should still be against it. Let's keep that up, guys. Let's not stop this. Let's let's make sure that we keep that very taboo and we don't encourage it whatsoever. Let's not encourage this, guys. I will go on the record and say it is a bad thing. That totems helped to prevent incest by creating a system whereby people had to marry someone with a different totem. Now, I'm not sure how accurate that theory is, but what I do know is that one- Imagine needing to be told that, like, hey, you gotta, could you, could you please marry somebody with a different totem? Like, it makes, it's, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be a bad sign, you know, going forward. Like, that's just somebody who just saw it happen, saw all the bad things that happen when siblings, you know, have kids, and then they're like, well, we got to do something about this. Uh, they won't listen when I tell them just don't do it normally. So I got to make up this whole totem thing. We we got to keep up with this totem thing or else we're going to have four-fingered people all over the place. Once again, totems are not something that can be relegated to so-called primitive cultures. I mean, don't coat of arms basically serve the same purpose? And what about team logos? They certainly divide people into tribes. And folks can get pretty darn religious about their favorite sports teams. Whoa, 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 guys, guys, guys. We're not going to rag on sports fans now, are we? Sports fans are the best. Uh, they're definitely not crazy at, you know, for no reason. They don't overreact to things. Guys, I enjoy sports. All right, we now come to ancestor worship. And this one probably okay. represents the oldest type of religion because it relates to burial practices, which go back at least 100,000 years. We yeah. now know that even Neanderthals buried their dead with certain rituals. The idea expressed here is that people often see their dead relatives in dreams and that this led to the belief in mana, which is a Polynesian word for life force, but also to concepts such as ghosts, spirits, and souls which in turn led to the belief in some sort of underworld or afterlife. So in order to prepare the dead for the underworld and to prevent them from coming back to bother the living, humans started to bury their dead with certain rituals in order to show respect and mm -hmm. with certain grave goods that they might need. The fourth column talks about tribal gods and divine kings. Okay. This one I don't think deserves to be placed back this far on the chart. Probably the not. idea of divine kings really didn't evolve until after agriculture and permanent settlements, which was around 12,000 years ago. That's when human society started to become divided into different classes. So I'm going to skip this one for now. Yeah. Which brings us to... Na That's a good point, because I feel like the tribal gods and uh, divine kings and stuff would have probably been one of the last things on this list. Like ancient uh, ancestor worship, that sounds... That sounds like relatively like close up on the list, like one of the first couple of things that they did. Uh, nature, I can see that also being like, okay, so if we had a list, like which ones do you think would be at the top here? Um, I would definitely put, uh, let's, let's go back a little bit. Uh, man, I think I'm gonna put ancestor worship probably first as far as what I think happened would have been like one of the first ones. Then I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put magic and fetishism second. Then I think taboo and totemism may have been the third on the list. Yeah, am I going too far? And then, no, no, no. Nature was probably third on the list. Then, I'm going to just go on a limb and say tribal kings and gods. To become class. divided into different classes. It says here, skip this one for now. Okay. Which brings us to nature worship. Or as it says here, propitiation of nature spirits. Mm, coats. That's another thing. So I'm going to put coats after divine kings. So I think coat, like, ah, fertility coats, though. Okay. I'm going to put tribal divine kings last fertility cults may have been like the fifth thing, but Propitiate. make sure you put your list down in the comments, comment down your list below. Propitiation simply meaning trying to win favor. If we zoom out, you can see that 
this particular column and its successors ends up growing to dominate most of the chart. That's because to this day, it's still one of the main theories that is floated around when it comes to the origin of religion. Basically, mm. the theory is that at some point, humans extended the idea of spirits to animals, trees, and plants, and even inanimate things such as the sun and moon, a concept known as animism. This then led to the worship of nature because obviously the spirits of nature were more powerful than the spirits of humans and needed to be appeased. This is kind of the opposite of magic, which posits that humans are the powerful ones and can use sorcery to impact the world. This is summed up right at the top of the chart by this line here, which indicates that magic is about the relationship between subhuman and human, whereas nature worship is about the relationship between human and superhuman. But remember, this chart is over 80 years old and yeah. is based on theories which have now been heavily revised. Nowadays, instead of saying that magic is primitive and nature worship is more advanced, scholars of religion would now simply say that the two things are just different and in fact, often go hand in hand. Now, there's one more column and it's labeled fertility cults. These were matriarchal and presumably developed because women can give birth while men can't. But it's important to keep in mind that most of the information we have about mother worship in prehistoric times is simply mm -hmm. guesswork based on objects mm. such as Venus figurines. Let's now shift our attention towards the Neolithic period and Bronze Age. The first region-specific religion to show up on the chart is Egyptian religion. Sumerian religion, which later influenced Mesopotamian religion, showed up around the same time but for some reason was not shown. Yeah, because Egypt is just popular. Guys, if you live in Egypt, uh, your history is popular to people. You know, even though there's plenty of people who have very interest in history, like shout outs to every culture around the world. If you're still around today, you probably have a very interest in history. But Egypt just gets a lot of praise. It's like Egypt, Rome, you know, there, there's certain places that just get all the attention. You know, I live in America, so shout outs to modern America because we get a lot of attention now. You guys know who my president is, but do I know who your president is? You know, that's that's going to be the real question. I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, Oh, May, you live in America. Of course, you don't know who my president is. But you know what? Comment down your pre comment down your country and let's see if I know who your president is, sir or ma'am, person, you know, qualifier, whatever you want to put there. Comment down your country. I, you know, we'll see who knows what. And then tell me who the president of America is. What's the vice president's name, huh? If you, you, you know so much. Egyptian religion is a good example of how the six general types of religion shown at the top often get combined. Some of their gods may have originated as totems, which is why many have animal heads. But then eventually mm. nature related gods, such as the sun and wind god Amun-Ra, took precedence. But Egyptians also incorporated a belief in divine kings and lots of practices related to death and burial. They also used magic and had a universal mother god. So as you can see, their religion was a mix of all six original types. However, this chart places them under the nature column, which is fair because in the end, everything was connected somehow to the Nile River's flood cycle. Mm. The next region specific religion to show up on the chart is Aryan religion which nowadays okay. we call Indo-European religion. Yeah. This one's important because this is- I mean, unfortunately the name Aryan has taken a uh, quite a, a different turn. Like people use that in a way that is not, you know, they're they're trying to use that in a bad way, guys. They're, they're trying to take over, uh, not, not a great thing, guys, not a great thing. It's where the general notion held in the West that God is some sort of old man in the sky comes from. The early Indo-Europeans had a god called Dios Petar, which simply means Sky Father. But as the group spread to different areas, he became the Greek god Zeus, the Roman mm. god Jupiter, and the Germanic god Tiu, from whence comes the word Tuesday. But mm. most importantly, the name was the basis for the Latin word Dius, which then became Dieu in French, Dio in Italian, and Dios 
in Spanish. But the Indo-Europeans also migrated into India. There, as I mentioned last week, Indo-European religion likely combined with elements from Indus Valley Civilization religion, of which, Whoa. unfortunately, we know very little about because their script remains undeciphered, but also with mm. other local religions. This synthesis developed into Hinduism, but also gave rise to the Shramana movements, which include Buddhism and Jainism. However, it's important to note that Indo-European religion also spread to Iran, where it eventually evolved into the mostly monotheistic Zoroastrianism. Hey, guys, Zoroastrianism. So, guys, I do need to get my video done on Zoroastrianism. So, comment down, recommend a good place to watch a good video. I want to learn some interesting stuff about Zoroastrianism. Tell me. I'm interested in it. I'm telling you guys, that's going to be my next one. I like it. A mostly monotheistic because maybe it won't be the next one I do, but comment down a place that I, you know, I can get it done. Like, I, I feel like a good channel to watch it on and then I'll let you know when it gets done. Okay. How about that? I'll, I'm not going to tell you it's going to be done like the next one, but it will get done probably you guys just recommend the video. Okay. Just, just go and recommend the video. I'll take care of the rest. Okay. Like, while leave me alone about it, okay? Just leave me alone about it. Just stop bringing it up. It has just one supreme being called Ahura Mazda. It also has an opposing evil being called Angra Mainyu. Mm. But now that we've reached Zoroastrianism, I have... I feel like I, I know... I think I know about that one. So called like, Angra Mainyu. Yeah, so like Azor, um, oh, Mazda, you know, you guys know who it is. I uh, think this is like the the good guy. Uh, if any Zoroastrianists are in the, you know, watching this video, shout outs to you guys. Also, correct me if I'm wrong here. This is the good guy uh, over here. This this is the the bad guy over here. It's like the representation of bad and representation of good. Uh, and they have like a there's like another guy who like created both of them or something. I I don't remember. I think that's the story. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But now that we've reached Zoroastrianism, I have to bring up the term the Axial Age, which doesn't actually appear on this chart. If we zoom out to look at the entire chart, you'll notice that the busiest part of the chart is right in the middle. This mm. is where a bunch of new religions start, thus splitting the chart into two parts, the old religions before it and the new religions after it. And okay. if we zoom back in, we'll find that the most dense part of the chart is right here between 1000 BCE and the start of the Common Era. This mm. period consists of the Late Iron Age and Early Classical Antiquity. But scholars of religion call it the Axial Age because it serves as sort of an axis that caused the world to turn. The fascinating thing about the Axial Age is that religious change occurred in many different places, pretty much simultaneously but as far as we know, also independently from one another. So around mm. the same time, we get Lao Tse and Confucius in China, Isaiah and Jeremiah in Judea, Socrates mm. and Plato in Greece, Zoroaster in Persia, and the Buddha in India. I won't say much. Dang. Hey, shout outs. Man, this is like an all-star lineup right here, guys. Oh man, who you got? Who you got? You got like let's say you build an NBA roster over here. Obviously, you put like Buddha as in the center position, right? Uh, he just feels like he can hold it down there. Uh, then I'm putting Zoraster. He's got to be somewhere like the small forward. You know, he can spread the floor. He you know guard uh, the perimeter. He's a good like three and D guy. Uh, I feel like Plato's and Socrates like. Plato probably would be the starting point guard, and then Socrates. I don't know. I might put Socrates at the starting position, and then Plato's coming off the bench. Uh, Isaiah it seems like he'd be a good shooting guard. Jeremiah might come off the bench, and then for power forward, I'm gonna put Confucius there, just because I feel like he go hit him with the confusion. But then we got you know we got Low coming off the bench. Uh, so, again, we got a good starting five and a couple of great guys coming off the bench. This team is winning the chip, guys. If we had Jesus over here, it, this will be, team will be completely unstoppable. But I don't see 
where they're incorporating Christianity yet. Uh, it is coming though, because it is, oh, there it is. It, so it would be right here. Jesus of Nazareth, you know, bam, this is where we could put in our guy. So this is actually going to be the real shooting guard here. You know, he's going to get a lot of the pass touches. He's, you know, Jesus is going to get a lot of the shots up, but then we put Isaiah coming off. The, we got multiple guys coming off the bench, but you know, we, our starting five is going to be incredible guys. Shout well, out to that. Taoism and Confucianism, because quite honestly, Chinese religions aren't my specialty. I'll just note that this chart has them coming out of ancestor worship. But I will, of course, say a bit about Judaism. I like that the chart shows Judaism as starting after the Babylonian captivity, because mm -hmm. this is indeed accurate. Prior to this, the religion of the Hebrews is best referred to as ancient Israelite religion, because it was quite a bit different. Here, it shows Israelite religion as mostly coming from ancient Egyptian religion, which from an academic point of view is pretty accurate. Although yeah. I'd add that Mesopotamian religion played a major role as well. Notice though that the chart mentions Moses adopting the Kenite god, YHWH. Now, while Moses is understood mm -hmm. these days to be more of a legendary character, the connection to the Kenites is actually still a real possibility. The Kenites lived approximately here and were perhaps somehow related to the Midianites and or the Shasu, who also lived in this general area. Okay. This inscription found in Egypt and dating to before the emergence of Israel mentions the land of the Shasu of YHWA, which has led some scholars to posit that perhaps the Israelite god YHWH was inherited from the Shasu. Oh, wow. See, guys, this is what I'll be talking about, man. This is so freaking interesting. Like, people make up fiction, but then we got real life right here just doing this. Real life mysteries. Go figure it out. Go solve it. Come on, guys. This is insane. Mind blown. But regardless of how this god came to become the main Israelite god, what we do know for sure is that the Judahites were worshiping him and only him by the time of the captivity. Okay. However, Judaism was far from a static religion at this point. It continued to be influenced by outside forces, including Greek philosophy and Zoroastrianism, which is why, in my opinion, the Jewish scriptures are so important, regardless of whether you believe or don't believe in the Abrahamic God. Mm. I think a lot of it boils down to geography. The Jews happened to live at the crossroads of three continents. They were therefore influenced by almost every major ancient power, from Egypt and Mesopotamia to Greece and Persia. Mm. Thus, the Jewish scriptures are kind of an amalgamation of many ancient ideas. It's like, if you don't know, obviously there's no 100% proof of any of this, but I will say that is a good reasoning for why like how that could happen. Like if you think about it, this is ancient times. Everybody was going through these paths to connect and meet each other. You know, they would have been the place that interacted with the most amount of people. Like obviously people go to Egypt, but you know, maybe everybody from Egypt don't go all the way over here. Maybe everybody from here don't go all the way up here. You know, everybody, but when they all want to meet, you know, when they, when these guys want, they, you know, they got to pa cross paths and this is the path that they're crossing. This is like the hub. This is like the internet of their day, you know, of their day is a very big part of that. Uh, what I just said, like, yes, for their time, they were probably like the, one of the most, you know, bustling roads to go through to get to Egypt. Like this is the town before the, like this, the destinations here, this is the town that everybody knows about. Like this is the, the, the rest stop on the map where it's like, yo, come here and then continue your journey. Cause it's probably going to take a couple of weeks or months or however long it took for people to travel back then to get there. One of the things that my friend Siawish and I like to debate is whether monotheism was invented by the Jews or whether they took the idea from the Zoroastrians. Mm. My opinion is that while Zoroastrianism likely helped cement Jewish monotheism, Zoroastrianism was a little more dualistic. Like I mentioned earlier, it has an evil spirit called Angra Mainyu, 
he was incorporated into Second Temple Judaism. That's true. I don't think the Jewish people have a devil in theirs. Like, it's just straight up believing in God. Hey, shout out to y'all, man. Shout outs to y'all, man. Yahwehism has this guy. But from there, he was passed on to Christianity and Islam while being dropped by rabbinical Judaism. Mm -hmm. Let's now take a look at how the chart deals with Christianity. Note that Jesus is not given any more special attention than anyone else, yeah. which is nice because it makes the chart unbiased, at least in this regard. It also quite- I'm about to say, I saw some things at the beginning of that chart that would make me think it's biased, but maybe just because I'm black. And the guy who made this chart would probably call me some type of Negroid or something. And I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. You know, I got to say. So, you know, this that one thing may be slightly unbiased to like Christians. But like, I think he got some personal biases. I'm pretty sure he got some uh, some bad ones, you know, some some ones that I don't I wouldn't want to, you know, interact with if I knew him 80 years ago, which. 80 years ago, it was, you know, it's 2024 now. So just think back. You get every year, you get less and less of an excuse, people. Less and less. Remember that, you know, 60 years ago today isn't the 60 years ago of 20 years ago. Remember that, guys. Rightly shows Christianity as coming out of Judaism, but also being heavily influenced by Greek and Roman ideas. But check this out the end of the orange Egyptian religion section ends up looking like an arrow with the word Horus in it, pointing to Jesus. Sparks might have done this on purpose because there are indeed some similarities between the Horus story and the mm -hmm. Jesus story. Most notable, the fact that they both involve resurrection. However, okay guys, let's be real with ourselves. I haven't got to do too much judging this episode, but let's be real with ourselves. These two r religious symbols walk into the bar which one do you, you know, go to first? So here's my thing. As a Christian, I like this Egyptian one more. Shout outs to this Egyptian one. It looks freaking sick. I would get that tatted on me. The cross, especially with Jesus on it, man, that just, that's a little bit, you know, it's like, come on, man. The guy died here, guys. Let's, you know, let's, let's show him in a better light than this, but this here, this is this is what's up. But you know, again, nothing wrong with this. You know, I just I just like this one a little bit more. Like, look at it, look at this, and then look at this. Like, you know what this is, but this one, you're like, whoa, there's some mystery behind this one. There's a little bit of, you know, vo uh, vo. You know, it's just like it hits in that way of like, whoa, what is this? Could this be that? Could this be that? I do not know. I want to find out. I'm getting it at it. So I would like to point out. It goes this one and then this one. Which one do you guys? What what, what is your top? You know which one? Which one do you prefer? Just tell me. Uh, comment one if you like the one that I chose. Comment two if you like the second one. Uh, or you can just comment Horus or Jesus, and I will also understand what you mean unless you comment that months from now or weeks from now which i may forget so then i would just be like that is a strange comment but you know do the time stamp when you do it time do the time and be like at this time you said to do this and then at that point i will be like whoa shout outs to this person it's been a couple of weeks thank you for reminding me with the time stamp you know this is this is what we do. This is why I mess with you. This is why we're cool. Me and you. All those other people who watch, you know, we're cool too. But, you know, you know who I'm talking about. You out there. You you know, this is why I like you. Note that many of the similarities between Jesus and other dying gods often get overblown. Currently, the overwhelming consensus among all historians, both religious and secular, is that Jesus was, in fact, a historical person born yep. in Judea, not just some myth made up by copying other religions. You hear that, guys? It's been confirmed. Jesus was a real guy. You know, everybody else start confirming your stuff. We already did it. You know, shout out. Hey, you know, nothing wrong with it. I'm not trying to convert anybody. Just saying when we know he was real, you know. Of course, Christianity is eventually shown splitting into Eastern. <laughs> 
guys, I am not <laughs> saying anything. There's nothing wrong with any other religion. You know, these are jokes, guys. <laughs> jokes. Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism. <coughs> it's a bit unfair that the Catholics are shown as keeping the original color purple because really each branch has an equal claim to being the original trunk of the tree. If we yep. go down even further, we of course find Protestant Christianity branching off from Catholicism. But before I point out a few Come things- Come on, man. Why do Protestants gotta be the different color, man? What's up with that? What's up with that? Shout out to all my Protestants out there. It's along the bottom. I want to go back up and talk about Islam. On this chart, Islam is shown as branching off Judaism and is placed in a manner so that Judaism ends up in the middle of the three Abrahamic religions. Mm. In my opinion, it would be more accurate to put Islam in the middle. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I like that. I like that. As I've explained in previous videos, Islam was probably influenced by an early Christian sect that viewed Jesus as the Messiah, born of a virgin, but not as the divine son of God which is also how Jesus is viewed in Islam today. So mm. in many ways, Islam... Mm. Interesting, interesting. You know, shout outs to, you know, the Muslim, you know, or the Islam, shout out to Islam. Um, shout outs to Judaism, shout outs to Christianity. You know, it's like, it's like when you see three brothers that you're just like, you guys are so different, but... You know, you, you know that you guys share some family, you know, you guys could all be working together, but you're just so different. But you're brothers, you know, other people can talk about you. You guys will fight for your fight for them. But, you know, you guys will talk about yourselves all day. You'll be like, oh, man, I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy. But let let somebody else from outside come and be like, oh, I don't know about this. And then you will defend the other one. Right. Is that is that how you guys is that how it is? We're brothers. You know, that's how I feel about it. It's sort of a mix between Judaism and Christianity, which is why I think it deserves to be placed in between the two. I now want to move from the green column on the left of Christianity, Islam, to the green column on its right, which is the continuation of Greek philosophy. Okay, enough, my issue with this chart, there seems to not be enough colors to represent everything. Like, if you're going to go through this much stuff, I feel like you may need to like produce more colors i'm sorry every time you hit a new religion maybe hit it with another color i feel like that just make makes more sense that's just me though if this was my chart i would have had more colors i did not make this chart guys i was not alive 80 years ago so i didn't make the chart if i did it would have had more colors it would have said way less things about negroids that's just me though eventually it gets labeled humanism and consists mostly of Western European philosophers. But then around 1850, we get a new pink column branching off. You can probably guess by the name Marx here that yeah. this new column represents communism, which is somewhat strangely included as a religion. Yeah, guys, communism is not a religion. Uh, so I don't know why this is here. I mean, I guess if you talk to people who, you know, who are communist, okay, here's the thing. Talking to people in America who believe in communism is different. They will make it feel like it's a religion. If you talk to people who actually live in communist countries, they'll probably have a slightly different opinion on it, not saying anything is good or bad, but people who live in America, which is not a communist country, who talk about communism a lot, make it seem as if it is like a religious concept, the way that they describe it. It is not is that's just not what it is is it's literally you know mostly just like a social economic thing like stick to that stick to it being that you're not you know Karl Marx was not just like a guy you need to be praising every night I'm sorry I mean one could argue that communism can be kind of like a religion but then capitalism should be included as a religion as well Exactly. Come on. You're going to include capitalism? What are, you know, or are, are dictatorships going to be in here next? What's going on uh, here? You see, this is where this chart gets really biased, which is a shame because up to now, the chart has been fairly non-judgmental, aside from the slight against so-called primitive people that I pointed out earlier. I mean, Sparks makes it super clear that he doesn't like communism. He calls it a corrupt philosophy and mentions... Oh, wow. This is not... 
godless propaganda teaches faith in the so and the social collective wow guys this is insane why would you say these things like why would you bring this point up here this doesn't this definitely feels like he's saying don't do this these are bad now i didn't even say that communism was bad i just said some of the people who preach about it take it a little bit too far and act like it's like one thing when it's just like another thing but like you know that's a whole other thing this guy is actively saying it's a godless propaganda and it teaches people uh faith in the social collective versus like religion which is like shouldn't people have some faith in their social collective you know shouldn't you be like okay the society will be able to assist people in need you know when the need arises but you know just because capitalism doesn't necessarily teach that doesn't mean that that's a bad concept there's good concepts and everything there's bad concepts and everything guys get over it capitalism ain't that bad but it also isn't that good either you know there's a bunch of bad stuff with capitalism but i'm not going to mention here because then all the communist people will be like oh see see communism is actually really cool and then i'm gonna have to be like no it's not super cool all the time I'll, i like owning property sometimes you know that's cool property taxes are not cool these are the issues that americans have to deal with guys and godless propaganda he then states, communism reveals itself to be a police state aimed at world domination. He also Bro, what isn't aimed at world domination? Come on, man. You act like capitalism isn't also trying to dominate the world. One company at a time, one merger at a time. You know, we all our food comes from eight companies when you realize it. And I think that eight might be six now. Who knows? There's like six companies that own like everything. All of our resources in America, get over it. That's part of like everything. If communism does it, you know, what's the difference? They're, 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 they're the same. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to go through that. Also has a separate column over here. that Also, also you socialists ain't safe either. Also mentions communism and ends up being called state worship. Not sure why he didn't put the two together somehow, but he did make them both pink. Perhaps he wanted to bring to mind the term pinko if so that's a Ooh. second example of a subtle message found on this chart okay so now that we've looked in depth at the histomap of religion i do want to say just a few things about the other two histomaps first the original histomap again from a design perspective it's pretty great however from a teaching perspective it is not just like the adam's synchronological chart of history that i discussed in a previous video the information is out of date and very much skewed toward a 19th century European perspective. If we look here at the bottom, we can see that 90% of the chart focuses exclusively on Europe. India, Mongolia, and China are given a little bit of attention throughout, but there is zero mention anywhere of Sub-Saharan Africa or yeah. the pre-Columbian Americas. The histomap of evolution That's is wild. even worse when it comes to its 19th century views. The first half is fine, but once humans show up, things get pretty twisted. It incorporates a lot of now debunked racial theories. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like this is going to get super racist super quick. In which the African race is quite clearly posited as being inferior. Not only does the chart use outdated terms. Come on, now again? It also places the Africans right next to monkeys and apes. Unfortunately, even using the same color so that by oh the bottom God. of the chart, they merge. So while these charts can be- Oh yeah, and of course, all these other types of guys never, you know, they're all different, you know, there we go. They're, you know, they're, they're different here. Instead of all the humans being a part of each other. And, hey, look, they added Bushmen into there. That's so interesting there. This is, this is, I'm sorry guys, this is, I, this is a racist chart, guys. I don't know what to tell you used to teach students how 19th century Europeans saw the world, the actual content on the chart should not be used as a teaching tool. Now, last time I talked about old charts like these, I got a few- And I said I like that chart the most. I, th I thought it looked cool. You know, all right, I'll separate the art from the artist. The chart itself looks okay. Comment saying it's unfair for me to tell people not to use certain charts. 
considering that I myself sell charts. You know what, guy, Mr. I want to comment on people's pages five months ago. You know what you can do, guy? You can go, you know, blank, blank, blank yourself, if you know what I mean. You know, go blankety, blank, blank, blank yourself, if you know. You know, how about that, guy? You're just talking bad about this one to sell yours. No, he's not. He's got actual opinions on it, guy. You can't actually have opinions. About world history. Well, no likes. That's why you got no likes on. Look at look at that like list. You didn't even have anybody else liking it. Charts, considering that I oh, myself oh. sell charts about world history. Well, let me respond by saying that I would never make a video complaining about a competing product. Made tell him, Matt. Tell him. Tell him now, made Matt. By a contemporary designer. But the yeah. Histamap map is 92 years old. No, and the app 92 years old. This man can't make a comment on a 92 year old map. The man ain't even alive anymore who made the map. The it ain't competition. It ain't like, oh man, you buy a histo map, then you're not gonna buy one of Matt Baker's maps. No, that's not how it works. You could buy two maps, guys. Adam's one is 153 years old. <laughs> to me, that's fair game. Fair game. That's what I'm saying. This video, I'm reacting to this video. It's like three weeks old. Fair game. <laughs> In fact, as a history educator, I feel that it's my duty to inform people. It's the same. <laughs> about the differences between these older charts and more up-to-date products. And when it comes to more up-to-date charts, I'm happy to point people to others beyond just my own. One that I highly recommend, especially for younger students, is the Big History Timeline Wallbook by What Ooh. on Earth Publishing. The format is quite similar to the Adams chart and the Histomap, but it's way more up to date and comprehensive. While researching okay. for this video, I also discovered that someone has created a Histomap of Africa and is selling Whoa. it on Etsy. So shout out to them for creating some of the. Guys. I think I want this map here. This looks freaking incredible. Content that's missing from the original Histomap. Now, one last thing before I go. If you'd like to take a closer look at any of the three Histomaps by John B. Sparks, know that all of them are available for free as digital downloads. This is because they are all so old that the copyright on them has expired. Guys, this dude in the comments was talking all of this, but then these maps are so old, they're free. Some sites will try to sell you digital copies, but they're just downloading the free ones and then, and then reselling the it price to you. tag on them. Yeah, don't so do watch that. Watch out for that. One really good resource when it comes to downloading vintage charts for free is the David Rumsey Historical Map Collection. I'll mm. leave a link to that in the description, as well as direct links to all three histomaps. Okay, so that was a look at the Histomap of religion. Wow. Let me know in the comments if there are any other charts that you know of, particularly old ones that you'd like me to review. Thanks for watching. Guys, shout outs to Matt Baker again. Shout outs to the Useful Charts team for making another great video. Very interesting one. It literally did go over all religions, so that was cool. It didn't just focus on one. Uh, and then, you know, there was some interesting stuff in there. There was some there was some interesting moments that we had together today, guys. That was a very interesting video. I, I have to keep saying interesting because if I say other words, I feel like I'm going to curse. And I'm not trying to curse in this video. This is a religious content video. And you know how I am. I'm only cursing in the movie reactions, guys. So shout outs to that. Uh, join me there if you want to see me say words like the words that I I won't say here uh but also i may say if the time needs I, I, i'll try not to though guys but shout outs to me you know again i did just do the reaction to this video you guys watched it it's incredible i know uh religious content is back shout outs to it uh this will be out sunday next sunday you don't know what's coming unless you become a member guys did you know i have memberships now you guys know that I have memberships now, 99 cents a month. All you got to do, pay the money, you get to become a member. Join the members. Uh, when I do live streams, I'm going to wait till I get a couple more members. Do live streams. Members will be in it. Member chats. Uh, you guys going to get priority things like comments. You're going to be able to use uh, the emoji. Guys, 
become a member now all that stuff fun stuff great stuff there guys so yeah great video um did you guys know that i sell merch if you don't take a look at the description i got a merch store check it out it's great stuff you get the shirt you get the use the chart the shirt for for me that i made not useful charts that i made the shirt but it's it's somewhere it's not in like my reach right now so i'm not gonna grab it but you guys seen it already you guys saw the videos with me all, with wearing it you saw the unboxing check out the shirt it's a great shirt i got hoodies i got posters i got stickers i got everything you need i got it i got hats sweats you know all the fun stuff so guys join me there uh but with that being said thank you as always, if you enjoyed the rambling, if you enjoyed the yapping, you know where to find me. Like, comment, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me your favorite part of this video. Tell me what part I was right about. Tell me what part I was wrong about. Tell me how great I am in the comments. I love to hear it. Uh, my ego goes up so high when you do. Guys, thank you as always. I love you. Bye.